Okay, so today we have to replace this heat exchanger. This is an LGA 150. Uh, this thing is a 99, so she's 24 years old. This is not the original heat exchanger. This is a replacement, and I'll show you exactly why the replacement failed. Now, unfortunately, I didn't have my camera with me when I diagnosed this, but basically my symptoms were this. I came up to the unit. We have a newer draft motor, and my rollout switch was tripped. So obviously I checked the heat exchanger like I normally would, go and check the tubes, tubes look fine. I reset the heat exchanger, I hear everything click, everything lit. Okay, fine. I went and got a new limit in my truck because I had one and they're pretty cheap. So pop one in and it lit up and the flames were a little bit orange to me, okay? They weren't that nice blue cone. So took apart the burner rack and cleaned out all the burner tubes. Half of this rust that you see here, all this came out of those burner tubes. They were nasty. Cleaned it all up and it lit faster, but I was still getting a lot of orange flame and I couldn't figure out why. So then I started taking everything apart and here's what I found. Let's, let's just get into the, taking this apart here. Let's get rid of these doors. So, I already left everything unplugged, so basically just unplug the spark igniter, unplug this connector here, take the wires off of your vacuum switch. There are three screws in the top and three screws in the bottom, and then obviously our gas line's still off from last time I was here. And this guy should be relatively loose. All right, take our gas union off. I think I only put one screw back in. And what they did, you can see, let me take off my head. Right here is our failure. All right. Now, if you look at these tubes, this is rusted, but one hundred percent solid, even the tubes. But right here, it's not even rotted; it's physically cracked. All right. You see that crack? I just made it worse there. And there's another one here, but it's not rotted. It's not a weak spot. The problem is, is when they replace, whenever they replace this heat exchanger, they never replace this piece. Which this here is called the corbel plate. I don't know why they call it a corbel plate because it doesn't really support anything like a cor actual corbel does, but that's what it's called. So you can see it's rotted out completely and melted. This acts as a heat, heat shield for the face of this unit. So basically what was happening is this rotted out, it's pretty poor over there too. This rotted out, allowing the flames, instead of hitting this piece of relatively sacrificial metal and being diverted down the tubes, it was actually licking the face of this heat exchanger, which ended up, this was probably glowing red. And just from that, the uh, heating and cooling cycles of this whole heat exchanger and these tubes expanding at different rates cracked it. Now, let me show you what a regular plate would look like. So you can see the size of the tubes there. And here is the regular plate. And see the size difference? So that actually guides the flames down the tubes without having the flames physically touch 
the outside of these tubes or the face of this. And that is why this heat exchanger failed. You could have gotten many more years out of it if they had just replaced this. But a lot of people don't or don't realize it because this is actually a separate piece of metal that you have to order separately. It is not part of the heat exchanger. It does not come with the heat exchanger. You have to order this separate. So right now, we have to rip out the rest of this, this stuff. Basically, what comes out is uh, all these controls here will pop up. So let me put you back on my head. And we're just gonna go about taking the rest of this stuff off. So there are a couple of screws here, one here, one here, one here. And this gets unplugged. switch okay slide this back here and then get a brush in here get all this garbage out now I also got new burner tubes let me just show you what those look like I cleaned them all up with a wire brush, but they have a lot of rot on them. So these are being replaced and you can see, I don't know if it shows up on camera, but see how these are pinched together to here and these are so open because they're rotted. So we got, just got all new burner tubes. So we're actually gonna set this off to the side. All this rust is from the burner tubes and that original corbo plate. Okay, so we also need to take this out, so um I don't think that's going to fit through. If I take that, all the electrical is in here. I'm just thinking to myself out loud here. Um Might be able to swing that. Mm, not quite. Not quite. Okay, so we'll just see if we can undo this union here. Yeah, she'll come off. I'm just taking this, I just have to take this piece off because this is blocking my. Uh, Heat exchanger. So we'll just undo that. Now this should swing. And that comes out. Now there's a row of screws on the bottom, and then there should be a row of screws on the top. So, 
those are all out. Now this whole heat exchanger should push out towards me. There's one thing that it'll hang up on is these two little screws right here. So we'll just take those out. There we go. Now let's go over to the other side, take the heat exchanger cover off and you'll see how clean it looks. So I'll take you off my head again there. You can see how clean that heat exchanger looks. And the only spot is right down in there, straight down these tubes is where that crack is. You might be able to see light on the other side of that. I don't know if it'll show up on the camera. Now the way this works is this just slides on these guides. There's nothing screwing these this way. This is just a guide on these little rails. Okay, so this whole Thing should push right out the back or right out the front rather these screws don't really do anything I didn't miss a screw I think it's just stuck I think it's just wedged into oh no wait you know what yeah I think we just wedged in there Just stuck on something. Uh, it's stuck on it. Oh, I think it's stuck on that screw. Yep, it is. I think this this screw is just yeah, missed a the screw. <laughs> there we go. See, when you take out all the screws, it comes out easy. So. Oh. What we can do, since I have an external disconnect, my wiring does not come up through there. I'll just loosen this and turn it to the side. She is. Ah, oh, it's a lovely noise. <clears throat> okay. She is not light. And there you go. But you can see the rest of the heat exchanger there. It's in great shape. So basically a, a $40 pot killed the heat exchanger. All right, so now while I'm waiting for the boss man to bring me my heat exchanger, what we're gonna do is actually I'm gonna go over here to my workbench. And we're gonna replace these burner tubes. Now, you can get this out when this assembly is in the unit just by taking this little piece off of here. Okay. Take this off. Um, all right, so where were we? Yeah, we take this off here, just like that, 
And then these guys will just pop right out. And you can see they're kind of in rough shape. I don't know if the... Uh, I'll take a picture of the worst one. probably the worst worn one. And so this is what it should look like. So you can see the difference there in these little slots. Now these little slots are to allow the flame to carry over to the next burner and light it sequentially. You see it? Look at the plate, or what's left of it. Good like that. Use that now. What? You can't. You can't reuse those. But that that little fifty dollar plate there killed that heat exchanger. Yeah. The tubes are like brand friggin' new. Look at the tubes. The tubes are brand new, man. Nope, this one's upside down. Yeah, that's fine. Everything else is fine. It's just, it was just, I mean, I got some flaky crap over here, but um, it's not that I'd be crazy concerned about. Brought up my vacuum for a reason. the old vacuum. on the front. Like the day it was put in.
All right, it's got to uh, flip. This is that. That's the top. Okay. All righty. Let's gotta line up the tabs. All right, I'm in. Me too. Gotta pivot. Front up, back down. I'm in the slot. You in the slot? Yep. I might have to just yeah, tweak it here. Right it. Yeah, right there and right right this corner right here. Yeah. Yeah, it's just this little rubber strip. It's a uh, rubber strip and that. There she is. There you go. Beautiful. More better. Center this up a little bit. Usually, once you get one in, try to go in the holes that were there. I can feel them. There it is, right there. So the way I work this usually is to line up these holes first. One screw in. And just line this up. And that guy there, and then you can pivot the whole thing on the rest of it. Everything's plugged in, everything's jumped out. That's that. Let's see what we got for gas pressure. Shut this. Did you screw them together? Yeah. So we're getting four, four inches water column, and we're supposed to be, we're supposed to be four point, uh, three point seven, and it looks like our we, our range is two and a half to five. So we're right in, right where we want to be. I wouldn't touch that. And we're on high fire. So you can see our flame is nice and blue. And there goes a the blower. You think that's blocked enough? It all went this way. It all shot this way, but now it's too tight. Woo! Schmoky. Uh. 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 Uh.
my light. Yeah, we're still fine. And 3.9, 3.8. Yep, so we're right in the range that we want to be. Oh, she's smoking. Gotta need a couple of those. All right, so basically we're done. Um, you can see we still got a little bit of smoke here and there. We're gonna do a few blow offs here, make sure that we uh, clear out all that smoke so we don't dump that into the building, and then we're done. And our gas pressure is uh, right in our range that we want it to be. It's uh, high fire is 3.7, and I have it jumped out for high fire, and we're at four. So that doesn't even warrant trying to mess with, in my opinion. Some people may differ, but it's perfectly fine for me. Um, flames are not rolling out. Flames are being drawn perfectly into those tubes. Nice and blue. No real uh, orange tint to them. So we're good to go.